Let's now show you the final part, but very, very important part of the tutorial, which is how you can debug your models by studying two things in parallel, the state graph and also the error trace. I'm going to show you how you can do it. But before that, I'll let you show you some very useful trick for using the remote lab. So this only applies to the remote lab. For your personal laptop, you may want to do something work around, right? Let me show to you. First of all, how do you download the state graph very quickly? As I show you in the previous video, you can simply go to under activities and go to the files to browse the file. Let's say this is a PDF. And of course, you can use some FTP, you know, protocol client application to transfer the file. But a very quick way to really download the file to your computer, for example, would be you're going to use some keyboard shortcut. Let me write it down for you and you can try. If you're using Windows, so this is about remote lab, remote labs, file transfer, either to upload a file from your machine to remote lab or the other way, how, or to download a file from the remote lab to your local machine. It will be the same way to actually launch the panel. So for Windows machine, if you're using a Windows machine to access the remote lab, or versus Mac, right? So this will be the shortcut. So you're going to say control plus shift plus, let me double check. Okay. Auto, alt, right? So you got to press these three keys at the same time on Windows to really launch the panel. But since I'm using Mac, so I'm going to show you the Mac uh, shortcut as well. So it would be the control as well. Not command, control. Plus shift. Plus over here, there is no alt key. So it would be the option key. Right? Depending on which operating system you're using, you're going to use a different third key. All right? So let me now try on my Mac. So I'm accessing the remote lab. Web uh, is a web browser tab over here. Control, shift and option it's going to launch this panel over here for me to either upload file but in this case i want to download the file the pdf file onto my local machine the state graph so i can simply just go to uh it's already the uh the path over here but what you can do is you can basically just uh, once you see the panel maybe a little bit different from what i'm showing here but i can just basically browse through to that particular location on the remote lab in my case, I'm going to go to desktop and uh, EECS 4315 and then under this folder over here and under the model and then this PDF. If I double click on that, it's already downloaded to the downloads folder of my machine. So you can just uh, try that and then I'm pretty sure you will know how to continue from there to complete. So that's how you can download the state graph very quickly from the remote lab. Hopefully that's a useful tip. Of course, it's for any file that you want to download quickly to your machine. How can I make the panel over here disappear? Not back over here. You want to say control shift, in my case, option once more. So it will go away, it will disappear. The same key to bring it back. What about the error trace over here? So you can definitely try to look at this, you know, just on the IDE. You can see you can collapse it, you know, you can into different line. So this is really showing to you in order to really violate the invariant property that we want, in which case we want to show that the B is actually a natural number, right? Oh, uh, sorry, N is a natural number. If you re recall what we were trying to check, if you went, uh, go back to the, uh, the model overview, we, we were checking invariant zero one. What's invariant zero one? Invariant zero one is about N, the variable is a natural number, right? That's what we are checking. If the invariant is falsified, it's not satisfied, that means there should be a single state that's actually going to violate this particular invariant property. Okay, okay. I'm going to write it down for you so you can take notes. It's really important for you to see what the error trace is. Okay, let me do it here. Okay, so what's really the purpose of the error trace? So when we talk about error trace, Okay, you can think about to check that the invariance property, let's say I, can be any Boolean expression, holds 
on each states. Okay. If it fails, you know what? Let me write a little bit better. So in checking, in the process of checking, in checking. Okay, so while we're checking that, the invariant property i holds on every system states. If it fails, that means there should be a particular system state that violates the invariance. If it fails, it implies that there is one system states. One system states. Such that not the case i. That means i evaluate to false holds. And error trace shows how to get here. Okay, let me try to make a little bit more space for me so I'll complete the sentence and then I will look at the trace together with you briefly. Shows how to get to this states from the initial one. Right? What do I mean? Let's say if conceptually this is your system graph, this is your initial states, and let's say maybe the initial states satisfy the invariance. So this is not the end of the counter trace. Let's say this one leads to another states over here. Let's say that one is also fine, right? It's going to give you a sequence of such states over here until it leads to finally a states that actually violates the invariant property. So I'm going to use the rat to indicate this will be the first violation. This will be the first states where not the case invariance holds. And the error trace that we saw in the TLA plot, uh, the TLC checker really try to show you how you can get from this initial states all the way to this problematic state. So the idea about error trace is so fundamental for using a model checker. So you don't necessarily expect that your invariant property can just be verified completely with uh, with success every time. It would be more valuable for the model checker to uh, model checker to, uh, to provide with you a so-called error trace so that based on this error trace and also on the state graph that we already downloaded we're going to see how we can fix the model accordingly okay guys this is really important but since it is so important let me just get this to a new page and then i'm going to write this in a different way okay so let me just uh, have a blank page and once we clarify the concepts we're going to do it in practice on the tool right okay and the final remark over here, using an error trace, and the state graph, debug by finding the problematic part of the model or you can see the module for example you might find that maybe the guards of the events is missing or should be made uh, differently or maybe the action for the uh, events is defined wrongly right there, there might be many possibilities so you want to make sure you do the right thing to fix the model so that there wouldn't be any error trace to disprove the universal quantification, right? You want Because you want to show that for every state, you satisfy the invariant property. You want to show that there's no way for you to find an error trace that can prove otherwise, all right? It is so important for you to understand what's really being said over here. All right, so we're gonna look at number one, the error trace and also state graph together. And then we'll try to get a feel about how we can find the problematic parts of the module that would that actually trigger the translation for the TLA plus specification. All right, let's now go back. All right, so I already, uh, and for the error trace, so this one tells you if you try to go from the initial and go to the loop, go to the choice, go to MLN, and somehow you can reach a state where 
the N is actually minus one. It's a very quick recap about this error trace is about. But I'm going to show you maybe completely just to see. Sometimes maybe the error trace is much longer, or your model or your module may be much more complicated, in which case you may not necessarily just be able to look at the very brief look over here. But for this one here, it's rather easy. Okay, let's look. Initially, you can see the i will be zero and n will be zero and the pc the counter will just be loop right we'll talk about this in the earlier video you got to check it out to make sure i understand and the next one will be after we're taking the choice and the i and n will not actually be change anything we don't really modify them just yet if you go through this particular trade you will see ultimately as soon as you take the action of the mlm because its guard is simply just true it's unguarded in this case that's problematic i can tell you right and when we take the action for MLN from here, the next stage is going to be the effects of MLN action executed, which will be N is assigned to N minus 1. If you remember from here, if you look at the action part for MLN, you can see that one there is exactly over here, which is N will be substituted by N minus 1, right? That's problem. Oh, this action itself is okay. But the problem is when you try to guard this MLN occurrence, true is actually not good enough you should really make it more restrictive to say if the value is not too small then you can do the decrement that's really the problem all right let's now go back to over here and let me show you very quickly about putting this trace and also the state graph together and then we'll see how we can fix it right already got it over here right I'll try to uh, leave this page as clean as possible so you can also print it out you know for for your study but let me show you very quickly this part over here is a state diagram that's generated by the tool that I showed to you. And this part over here is the trace I just copied. Oh, how do you copy the trace? That one I forgot to show to you. You can see under the error trace over here, there is a button here. If you move your mouse over, you can click on that to uh, copy the trace into the clipboard. You can also choose the shift click option. You can, uh, you can try that. So that's the option I used. Once you copy the trace over here that complete trace you can paste it to some editor and then put the uh, put that together with a pdf file for the state graph that's what what i'm doing here all right and so that's the trace which i'm going to show you very briefly and also this part over here just for your reference that's our original uh, algorithm specification which triggers you know the whole tla plus specification right so these are the three things you want to pay attention to if you look at the trace over here, you can see here they talk about this will be the first part over here. It's telling you the program counter is currently in the loop. All right. So think about this is the initial one, which is the loop, which is the loop. So this is how we started with, right? And for the loop over here is actually going to right. You can see the blue here, which correspond to the loop, which is the blue over here. I try to be consistent with the color. Okay. And the loop itself is actually going to move to the choice. You can see the choice is the next one. You can see this is the choice over here, right? When you go from loop to choice, in that way, I and N, they don't really change the value, not just yet, right? You only change the I once you move to progress. You only change N once you move to one of the actions, right? It's gonna be a choice. So now you can see the choice over here is going to be the choice here which correspond to also the choice over here, right? So once the choice move, what will be the next one? That one is telling you, you will go to the MLN guard because from the state diagram over here, you can see from choice over here, either you can go to MLL guard or you can go to MLN guard. In this case, both of them are enabled. But remember, the choice is a non-deterministic choice. So when you take this one here, that means in one scenario where we had a non-deterministic non choice to go to over here, that's where the error might occur later, right? That's really important for you to remember this point, okay? So if we go over here, and let me just make a quick notes over here. So this one over here is, oh, let me make it a little bit thicker for you. So this is a non-deterministic choice. Deterministic choice for a scenario where the MLN guard is actually chosen, right? So when you go to the next one, MLN guard over here. So that one there really corresponds to, you can see the MLN guard over here. 
which correspond to the ML in guard. Sorry, the color doesn't don't really match. I don't really have that on my iPad, but you see the idea, right? They really mean the same thing. And the ML in guard has only one possibility. Once the guard, if you look at that, ML in guard is actually over here. It is true, it will be satisfied, so you're gonna go for ML in occurs to call, right? So ML in occurs is over here. So that'll be the next one. I'm just trying to follow the trace just for one time together with you. So ML in occurs, so the guard will be satisfied. So you're going to go for its action, right? ML in occurs is exactly over here, right? And when you go to the ML in action, right? That one there. ML in action over here, right? Which is over here, right? ML in action. That one there, if you, you can take a closer look, that's also about modifying the stack, right? Remember that one is to say, right? We talk about how the stack can be understood. So in this way, we are actually going to call the procedure MLN, call its action, right? So MLN over here really is specifying, indicating MLN over here, which is gonna take the action, right? And that one there is actually going to uh, take the action and by taking the action, we're going to make a progress, right? The action itself, let me just show to you. The action itself is going to decrement the value of n by one. If you look at this, taking the action over here is going to decrement the value of n from zero in the beginning until the post states of minus one. You can think about here, this zero over here is a pre-stay value, pre-stay, value of n before ml in action takes effects on the other hand you can think about the minus one over here is after ml in action takes place so this will be the post states value of the ml in action over here right and so that part over there, and after that, we're going to go to the progress over here. And however, once we get, uh, at this point, uh, uh, once we reach the progress over here, we'll see that the value is already minus one. So we don't really execute the progress by decrementing, uh, by incrementing i anymore, because at this point, we already, we already got trouble, okay? So this is where the n value violates invariant zero one, right? Remember that should be n is a natural number. Apparently minus one, a natural number is equivalent to false, right? That's how the invariant property is violated. I try to be a little bit fast in doing this, but hopefully you can really follow this. And this particular path over here is really the error trace you really want to pay attention to, all right? And this part over here will be the progress, right? Okay, think about this. Finally, I will make a remark over here. This part over here, this path over here is the error trace. Okay, let me do a little bit better. Not the entire drag diagram, but a subgraph. That one there is really indicating the error trace. So guys, I think uh, that's about it. Uh, I think the state diagram itself is actually quite straightforward for you to follow. So I got several important exercises I'm gonna assign to you, okay? Number one, you want to make sure you follow with me about the error trace to make sure you really understand the correspondence between this and also this one here. And number two, you want to make sure you understand. I'll put a question over here, exercise. Why the state diagram, the state graph entirely corresponds to when we set D to be two and also N to be two. It's really important for you to study the entire state diagram over here and figure out. And why am I talking about this specific uh, constraint value for D and bound, right? Remember when we instantiated 
this model over here, that's exactly what you have to do, right? This D to be two and bound to be two. And this state diagram over here entirely really talks about when D is equal to two and N is equal to two, that's really the entire state diagram. And I already talked about part of it, and now you should be able to look at the entire diagram and also convince yourself this is really corresponding to each other. That's some little exercise I'll leave to you. That's one, okay? And we know that, so this error trace should really give us a very good hint that the MLN action should not be unguarded. Meaning that over here, you can see the guard that we had over here, the true over here should be more restrictive. Right, that's for the error on the MLN side. And for the ML outside is something similar, all right? So this is what I will do, okay? I'm going to go back to our model over here. So this is really some, the most valuable process you have to use a model checker for. So you wanna look at the error trace and the state graph and then figure out how you can fix the model accordingly. And I'm gonna fix it. So if I go back to over here, so I'm gonna fix the ML in guard over here, fix that to be if, well, N is larger than zero, so that means I do have some value for me to decrement, right? Let me just double check if that's really the one to really fix. Yeah, exactly. Over here, right? You can see now we're trying to make, so this will be one fix. Fixing for invariant zero and one, okay? And exercise I'm gonna assign to you later is to really fix uh, for invariant uh, zero two. In that case, I can give you a little bit hints. It's going to be something about symmetrically about fixing this guard. But of course, you cannot just assume you will always be the case. In order to really say this is the case, you, you need to look at a corresponding error trace and also the state graph, all right? Fixing four invariant zero and then two, right? That's something I'll leave to you for the uh, later, uh, later, later fix. I'll write it down for you at the end. All right, since we are now modifying the algorithm, so we should regenerate the algorithm. Otherwise, the model is not gonna be, re uh, it's not going to be reflected. Very important. So I'm gonna retranslate the plus cal algorithm over here. Everything's fixed, especially if you go back to the translated TLA plus specification, you can see that we do have ML, let me just try to find it out for you. ML in guard over here, you can see n larger than zero rather than just true. All right, that's really a, a difference over here. Okay, let's now go back to the model over here and everything stay the same and I'm now going to model check again. Awesome, you can see there's no error over here, no error trace, that means there is not a counter example trace that can be used as a witness to, viol uh, to proof or, uh, sorry, let me say that again. There is not a, a counter example error trace that can be generated by the model checker to disprove the invariant property. So that means the invariant property is true, right? That's good. So now we are done, right? So what's really left? I got several exercises for you. I'm gonna write that on my iPad and please make sure you do it before you complete the rest of the assigned exercises, the assigned tasks for your lab number one. Okay, I'm gonna write it down. What I will do is I'm going to uh, write that as a last page. You know everything you know, you should know in order to do this uh, final bit of exercise to finish off. I'm gonna write it down over here. So you have to, number one, at invariant zero and then two, two, TLC checker for invariant checking. That's something we show you for invariant one. So now you should really do for invari invariant two. For invariant checking. If it fails, study, I can tell you most likely it will fail. Study the error trace and stay graph.
and I show you how you can export these two things study the error trace and the state graph when I say study I know it's a little bit vague term but it's really important for you to understand what's going on and what's being set in the error trace in your other lab exercises or especially in your programming test you will have to interpret the error trace yourself so I would suggest try to do uh, try to fix your model in different ways to make it wrong inject some error so you can see different error traces to get more experience okay fix the model accordingly the model accordingly rerun translation uh, retranslate plus cal and then rerun TLC checker hopefully that will give you no error because you have fixed the model and my general tips for you to practice more practice more by injecting different errors to your algorithm and see how the error trace specifically because state diagrams will always be the same you know for the same model and see how the error traces can indicate a to indicate the fixes All right it's very important exercise for you to do okay and for data freedom updates oh i'll show you what what i really meant if you go back here Remember, we already fixed the guard, con uh, the guard condition for the MLN to be n larger than zero over here. So what we will do over here is, if you go to over here, so the guard for MLN should be n larger than zero. But at this point, I'm only modifying the property, so I don't really need to retranslate. So that's okay. But later on, if you fix the algorithm itself, you will have to, right? And later on, if you also decide to change the guard for the ML out, you should also change this accordingly so that you can add this dialog free as an invariant property. So the way we're going to check for dialog freedom is to say for every state, it should be that either the guard of ML out is true or the guard for ML in is actually true. Right. That's something you want to verify as well. That one there for our M0 is actually OK, but you can check for other models as well. All right. Update the ML out guard if necessary and then add the deadlock free to TLC checker for invariant checking. I don't think in this case you will get any error trace but you can feel free to maybe make your guard uh, for you know either ML in or ML out wrong in such a way that you might just cause the data freedom to really uh, fail. That might be. I'll let you think about it for invariant checking. Okay, right. Quite a bit of exercises for you to actually do, but I think that they're all important. And don't forget, we also got this little exercise here for you to study error uh, for study the state graph. And also, I believe in the previous part. I also got this little exercise for you to complete a control fuller graph. I think that this uh, this part uh, for this uh, for this part two of the lab number one tutorial has less uh, thing to really write. We only define certain property, but to really use the tool proficiently, you really need to understand what we have been talking about. Right? Every concept is so important. All right. I think that's about it. I know the introductory tutorial is quite a bit it will take quite a bit of time to really digest but that's the only way i think for you to learn uh to really use the tool effectively all right that'll be it and in the later lab we're going to show you maybe different syntax and possibly different functionality for the tool